you want to say that? I'm kidding. I'm going to get you ready to go. I'm going to say it. Hey, I'm just going to say it for you.
looking around, I think I am the substitute worship leader this morning. I cannot be held responsible for any mistakes I make, but I'm pretty sure I'm in the clear to say thank you, Joy, for that beautiful prelude. Thank you. It's great to have all of you here. What a, what a wonderful group of folks we have this morning. We're so glad that you chose to come here this morning to celebrate Easter, which as Christians couldn't be any bigger occasion, event to celebrate than Easter, can there? It's absolutely what we believe all comes down to what happened on what we call that Easter morning. So we're glad to have you here. Uh, somehow, in my haste this morning, I wound up going off without a bulletin, so I'm trusting that you have a bulletin and that you can see what uh, announcements there are in there. Are there any, is there anything in particular anybody would like to announce this morning? Oh, thank you, Bev. You're so kind. This is pretty. This is a bulletin. Okay, thank you. So as I quickly scan there, I think it was just a reminder, we have a business meeting and a potluck lunch coming up mm -hmm. April 7th. You wouldn't be a good Baptist if the first thing you didn't notice there was potluck lunch. Uh, is there anything we need to bring for, in particular for potluck, or is it just potluck? I've said this before, when I, I went to one church one time, and we had a snowstorm, and, and, but we still went ahead with the business meeting because that's what you do with the eight people that we had there, I think, for it. And, you know, we always say when you bring a potluck, it's amazing how many different things you all get. We went to one, and there was like six broccoli cheese casseroles. <laughs> no meat. Fortunately, we live close to the church and went home and got some. I don't remember what it was. It was probably lunch meat, but we, we added to it when we needed it. Um, and, again, for April, I want to point out we are collecting boxes of cereal, Pop-Tarts, and pancake mix for the Salvation Army Food Pantry. You've just touched all my favorite breakfast items right there. So, again, anything else that we need to add this morning? Well, I was, as I was thinking this morning about what the joy of Easter means to me, and there I reflect back because anybody that knows me knows that I have never said an original thought or idea in my life. Everything that I've said either comes from somebody much smarter than me, and there's a wide pool of those, or from a television sitcom or movie. I'm full of trivia from those things. That's what I kind of base most everything on. And as I thought about Easter morning, you know what I thought about? Field of Dreams. And anybody a Field of Dreams fan, I cannot pass by that movie when it comes on. And it, for those of you who don't, the, the basic scenario is a guy piles up part of his cornfield because he hears this message, if you build it, he will come. And he plows it up, of course, and if you're in Iowa, that doesn't look real smart to the average population that you're giving this up. And of course, at the end of the movie, and I watch this, and I will never forget, movies don't usually do this to me. I worried about, I couldn't figure it out. I don't know about you, but it didn't, that's why I don't do mysteries, because it never makes sense to me. But this one just, I get, what are they doing? And at the end of it, you realize that in this movie, these players from back in the early part of the, uh, the 20s and 30s, these ball players have been showing up. Well, one of them turns out to be his dad, and he reconciles with him when he realizes this is his own father who died years ago. And there's a, and and I thought so much about that, and I thought about, and the scripture was perfect this morning. As they went to the tomb to anoint the body of Jesus, what did they find? He wasn't there. He, and the, the look on their faces, and I can't imagine what that was like when they heard what had happened. And so I'm looking at... And I'm going to read from Mark 16 this morning, 1 through 8. And see if you see the same parallel that I did. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome 
bought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just before sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You're looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He is risen. He's not here. See the place where they laid him, but go. Tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. What a story, and what a surprise. When they went to that tomb and realized he wasn't there. The story of Easter. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we know and understand now what you did that morning and what your son did for us that morning. Lord, we are here to celebrate and to thank you and to praise you for what you did and the sacrifice that your son made for us to cover our sins, forever to have grace and mercy, and to forever have a straight communication with you, Lord, directly with you because Jesus covered our sins. We thank you. We celebrate that today. We thank you for all things in Jesus' name. Amen. We got a lot of great music this morning. We're going to invite you to stand as we sing the first song, Above All. I 
trampled on the ground You took the fall If I love me Above all Like a rose Trampled on the ground You took the fall If I love me Above all. I think you might as well remain standing because the next song is Christ Arose. try to get some higher hymns. <laughs> he lives.
In all the world around me, I see his loving care. I know my heart grows weary, I never will despair. I know that he is leading through all the stormy past. The day of his appearing will come at last. He He lives within my heart. Rejoice, rejoice, O Christian. Lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King. The hope of all who seek Him, the help of all who find. None other is so loving, so good. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me, the long life never away. He lives, he lives, in constant moving heart. You ask me how I know he lives. He And it's time for our children's message. We invite our kids to come forward up the front. get started on the story, I want to give these to you because I told you I would, okay? Yes, here you go, little one. And in fact, here's some extra ones for you to give to your friends. Would uh, that be okay? Oh, here comes another sweetie. Hi, hon. Okay, we need to get one back there. This little one may want one. Okay. I know you have, you have two there, right? One for you and one for your friends. Okay. Yeah. Okay, just so everyone got a couple. All right. If you listen to the song this morning, that's the important thing. Last week we were so sad because Jesus had died on the cross. But if he hadn't come down and died on the cross, then we wouldn't be able to be with him later on in heaven. Okay? All right. See here? This is Mary going to the grave here. And she gets there and she looks in and there's angels in there. But Jesus was gone. And that's because he rose. He had told us that he would raise from the grave. Come on and sit down, Hunt. There's room here for you. He told us he would raise from the grave. And all of his suffering and everything he did here on earth wouldn't have mattered a bit if he hadn't rose again. That's the whole thing. That's the important thing that we need to remember, that he rose from the grave. And he lives today, okay? 
So when you go back to your seats, you shout and you tell everyone that Jesus is alive. Okay? Maybe that'll make them laugh and realize how happy we are because we have so very many blessings. All right. Let's, here's Jesus talking to Mary right there. And he said, go back and tell my disciples that I arose from the grave. Okay, we're going to say a little prayer. And then you go back and you tell everyone that Jesus is alive. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross and rise again so that we may know how wonderful you are and we'll all be able to go to heaven and be with you someday. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. They'll want to go for a picture. Here you go. You have some. <laughs> you want to help up? <laughs> she is risen. <laughs> Come on. She's risen indeed. He is risen. You guys can be as excited as the kids. If, if you have little ones, they'll, you're invited to go. You'll, there's going to be way too much candy. <laughs> Just so you know. Well, after church last Sunday, a bunch of us stayed and we watched the movie The Passion of the Christ. I don't know if, how many of you have seen it, but my goodness, it's intense intense and I'd seen it before what hit me though was there was just one thing that just really hit me this time the hatred the hatred that there was for Jesus especially with this leader I think he was I don't know if he was a Pharisee a church leader and it just show him just angry and, and hateful towards Jesus as as he was on trial and he would just this leader would just yell kill him crucify him and it, it, that just really was powerful for me and you have somebody in your life that doesn't like you much <laughs> they would maybe even if they got the chance yell crucify him <laughs> you, you have somebody like that? And I, it made me think of a story. I, I told it quite a long while ago, but it just, it just kind of like with Roy in the Field of Dreams, it just hit me as I watched that movie and, and thought about what Jesus did for us. I was taking a bunch of kids on a ski trip up to Colorado, been on lots of youth ski trips to Colorado. We were between... Canyon City and Salida, if you've ever been on that stretch of road, it's curvy and it follows the river. And I mean, it's steep and really steep on down to the water. Well, the road was icy that morning as we were headed to Monarch. And there was this blue four-door car in front of us and it started fishtailing. Anybody ever fishtailed? Yeah, you, you, you get this sense of, uh-oh. <laughs> is fishtailing and then he turned sideways and whoosh, went down backwards all the way down that slope halfway into the water and so we stopped called 911 who knows though how long it was going to take them with 911 to get to where we were at so the le other leader and I we get out of the the church van and we look over the edge not knowing what we would find and this this it was this guy had gone backwards straight down halfway into the water hit a rock and smashed in the back of his car and we looked in this man that looked to be like 75 years old was trying to get out fortunately as he went down backwards um, driver's side this side the water was flowing this way and so he was on the downstream side of the river 
And we were able to, it was steep and slippery. We were able to get down to him and pull this fella and his little dog Choo Choo onto the bank. And he was bruised and he was soaking wet. How many of you have ever been in that river in Colorado? It's kind of like if you've been in that Alaska, Doug, that water. It's cold. It's really cold. Ice cold. And the bank was so steep, he, he struggled to get up. He really even couldn't get up. We had a tow rope with us. And we got him to get a hold of that, and we used the tow rope to help him up. And we got to the top, safe and sound. And as I thought about that whole event, I wondered, what if his car had ended up out in the middle of the river? This man would have had a really, really difficult time getting to the shore, first of all, with the current of the water. And you know, he would have tried to save his dog Choo Choo also, right? We all would have. So I asked myself the question, would I have gone into the water to try and save him? You ever tried walking in a river like that with its flow? <laughs> it's basically impossible. But what if he was injured, couldn't get out of his car? Would any of us try to go in and, and get him? I don't know. I don't know. It, it probably would have been too dangerous. And then another thing was his car was dark blue. It matched the water perfectly. And with that steep slope down there, people driving by probably wouldn't have even seen him. It was just fortunate we were right behind him. Even if he had made it to shore, he probably wouldn't have been able to get up the slope to get to help. And with it being so cold, he probably would have died from hypothermia anyway. I don't know, what about you? Any of you, would you, would you have jumped in the water out in the middle to save him? Um, it would have been pretty hard to just stand there though, right? And watch that happen. Now, I want you to think about Put in your mind, do this, would you think in your mind, think about that church leader that hated Jesus, that was just standing there, crucify him, crucify him. Who's that person in your life? Can you put that person in your mind? <laughs> Who's like that with you? I can. I, I, I know who it is, and I haven't seen them for t over 20 years, but they're probably still bitter and probably still hate me, still do. That and this lady, I got her age by 17 years wrong. That, she probably hates me more. That's a great, bad, I learned a lesson with that story. Age, weight, don't go there. I learned it, I, I'm sure she, she was mad, 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 mad. So, Picturing them in your mind, what if you were in the church van with us, headed uh, skiing, and that car goes down the bank of the river, and we stop and run back to the spot where it went in, and the car landed out in the middle, and the driver's able to roll down the window. I say roll down, but get the window down, and you see in the car it's that person that person, the individual that just might hate you most in this world. Put that person's face in the car. And they're injured. Can't get out of the car. But we have the tow rope and we need to send somebody with the end of the tow rope out to reach them to help get them back. Well, it just so happens you didn't come on the ski trip by yourself. You came with the person you love most in this world. Your spouse, your kid, your grandkid, just that person that you love and adore. 
the only way, only way to save this individual that just despises you is to send that person with the end of the tow rope out into the water to save that one who <laughs> literally does not like you. Would you send that person out into the water? It, we might go, right? Maybe. But not them. Oh, and I, I forgot to tell you. For a moment, you're able to see the future. And you can see what happens when you send that one that you love out there. That loved one of yours is going to slip and fall right before they reach the car and they're able to, to reach out the rope. And the one that despises you is able to grab onto the rope and be pulled to safety. And your loved one washed down the river and drowns. The one you love most in the world will die for the one that you don't really care for and you know they don't care for you. Would you send them knowing that that would happen? Our Lord, He went to the cross for those who hated Him. Also for those who loved him, but he went to the cross for those that were yelling at him and spitting on him. And the thing is, God even sent his son to die for us too, you and me. We who sin against the Lord every day. Jesus, our, our God who created all the heavens, all the earth, created us. Who, who hung all the stars in the sky. He was amazing. He didn't talk back or fight back during his arrest, during the sentencing, during the crucifixion. And think about it. He didn't go into a river and, and, and just drown. He didn't even just hang on the cross and suffer and die which would have been hell in itself, right? No fun. They mocked him. They beat him. They taunted him. They ridiculed him. They, they slammed that crown of long thorn on his head. They whipped him. They spit on him. They just jeered at him. <laughs> it was horrible. And then with no strength left, they made him shoulder that cross and carry it up the hill to Golgotha. He was so weak he couldn't do it. And, and don't you think he had to just feel all alone? Everyone deserted him. Jesus, who had all the power in all the world and in all the heavens, all the power... He who, who could have called upon legions of angels. He could have. <laughs> if you were in Jesus' place, what would you have done? What would you have done? Jesus chose not to stop it. Because he knew it was the only way. To, to pay that price for our sins. And thank goodness, right? He didn't buckle under the pressure. He, he was so beaten down, he didn't even have the strength to carry that cross. They had to get somebody else to do it. And yet, he carried through. It's, it's totally amazing to me. <laughs> all of Jesus' suffering during his crucifixion. Which do you think was the worst? What was the worst part? What do you think? The pain? I think it sort of feels like when he says, my Lord, my Lord, why have you forsaken me? 
when he said, my Lord, my Lord, being all alone, why have you forsaken me? And it's like, I did this for you. I did this for them. And I'm, I'm all alone. You ever been insulted by a low life? The rejection? It, 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 it wasn't just feeling like God wasn't there. It was those that were close. Remember Peter? I'll be there. Not me. I'll be there with him. He wasn't. He felt abandoned. Like Shelley said. Have you ever felt like God's abandoned you? Just remember, Jesus once felt the same way. I, why have you forsaken me? Jesus went to die for the very folks that hated him. There was a Roman soldier, centurion, that stood in front of Jesus when he died. And he witnessed this. And he heard his cry, and he probably heard that, Shelley. And, and he saw how Jesus died. And, and this Roman soldier said, surely this man was the Son of God. He gained a new respect for our God by witnessing how Jesus died. And God says, it's never too late for us to change our minds about Jesus or to try to do something on his behalf our God's awesome because he died for everyone everyone even those who hated him and even those of us who are maybe too often half-hearted or lackadaisical or selfish and then Roy read it two mornings later. Some women went to the tomb to anoint Jesus' body. And what happened? <laughs> tomb was empty. And they saw a white robed man sitting on the right side. And he told them, don't be alarmed. Jesus has risen. Suppose that was an angel. Jesus defeated death and rose from the grave to save all of us sinners. And so today, like the song said, we serve a risen Savior. He is risen. He is risen <laughs> With excitement, He's risen. And our, that same Lord chooses to come into our hearts if we believe in Him. And then in turn use us as His hand and feet. And most often, more, most likely, to those who are around us that are feeling abandoned themselves. There's this boy, he was a freshman in high school, and he said, uh, this boy said one day he was walking home from school and he saw a kid from his class, his name was Kyle, and it looked like he was carrying all of his books. He said, I thought to myself, why would anyone bring home all his books on a Friday? He must really be a nerd. And this freshman boy said, I had a, quite a weekend planned. It was going to the football game with some friends and we were gonna have this party afterwards. And so I just kind of shrugged my shoulders and, and went on. And as I was walking, he said, I saw a bunch of kids running towards him. And they ran at him, knocking all his books out of his arms. His glasses go flying off 10 feet out in the grass. and this boy Kyle lands in the dirt and he looked up and I saw this terrible sadness in his eyes and my heart went out to him so I jogged over and and as he crawled around looking for his glasses I, I saw a tear in his eye and so I grabbed the glasses and I said those guys are jerks they should really get lives and he looked at me and said Hey, thanks. And there was a big smile on his face. And I helped him pick up his books and asked him where he lived. And then, as it turned out, he lived near me. So I asked him why I'd never seen him before. 
And he said he had gone to a private school before that. And we talked all the way home, and I carried some of his books. He turned out to be a pretty cool kid. I asked him if he wanted to play football with my friends, and he said, yeah. And we hung out all weekend. And the more I got to know Kyle, the more I liked him. And my friends thought the same of him. Well, Monday morning came, and there comes Kyle with his whole big stack of books again. And I stopped him and I said, boy, you're going to really build some muscles with those pile of books every day. And he just laughed at me and handed me half the books. Over the next four years, Kyle and I became best friends. And when we were seniors, we began to think about college. Kyle decided on Georgetown, and I was going to Duke. I knew we would always be friends, that, that Miles would never be a problem. He was going to be a doctor, and I was going for business on a football scholarship. Well, it turns out Kyle was valedictorian of our class. I teased him all the time about being a nerd. <laughs> And he had prepared a speech for graduation, and I was so glad I didn't have to be up there. It wasn't me having to get, give that speech. Graduation day, I saw Kyle, and he looked great. He was one of those guys that really found himself during high school. He filled out, and he actually looked good in glasses. He wasn't a nerd. He had more dates than I had, and the girls loved him. And sometimes I was jealous. And I could see he was nervous about his speech. So I smacked him on the back and I said, hey, big guy, you'll be great. And he looked at me with one of those looks, like a really grateful one. And he smiled. He said, thanks. And he started his speech and he cleared his throat and he said, graduation is the time to thank those who help you make it through the tough years. Your parents, your teachers, your siblings, maybe a coach, but mostly your friends. I'm here to tell you that being a friend to someone is the best gift that you can give them. I'm going to tell you a story. When I was a freshman, I had decided that I hated my life. Kids were mean to me, and I planned to kill myself. I was going to do it over a weekend. I cleaned out my locker, so my mom wouldn't have to do it later, and I was carrying all my stuff home. Thankfully, I was saved. My friends saved me from doing the unspeakable. And he looked at me and gave me a little smile. I heard the gasp go through the crowd as this handsome, popular boy told us about his weakest moment. And I looked on with disbelief as he told the story of the th first day that we met. And I saw his mom and dad looking at me with that same grateful smile. Not till that moment did I realize its depth. You all, it doesn't have to be a freezing cold, fast moving river. God chooses us. He chose us by dying on the cross for us. He chose us that we might live. And not just live, but, but celebrate that life by living with him, for him. Easter is a time to celebrate the life our God's given us. It's a blessing to grab a hold of and to share. Well, why do you think, why doesn't God give us white robed heavenly angels to come tell us stuff anymore? In fact, the matter, He does. He chooses you and me. That's how God does it. He's calling us to be that angel in somebody's life, maybe to help them through the toughest time where they were thinking about taking their life. And we know for sure it's to share with them how much of difference Jesus has made in ours, right? If you've never done it, I, you, you've probably heard it a hundred times, but it's so true. Let Jesus in your heart. It's the best thing you could ever do. 
and then answer his call. He's calling all of us to be that angel in somebody's life that needs it. Every single age, probably especially middle schoolers. Seriously. I invite you to pray with me, and, and if you want to, pray along. It, it, Lord, thank you for who you are. Thank you for giving your life. And Lord, anybody, that if you want to pray it with me, Lord, I want you in my heart. I want you in my soul, Lord. I want a real, live relationship with you. And Lord, I also will serve you today. With your help, Lord, I know there will be people in my life who need encouragement, who need hope, who need peace, who need your love. May I be your angel. May I be your helping hand. Lord, um, when I have that opportunity, may your peace and your love and your servant's heart flow through me. Lord, we love you and will love you forever. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. And just a message this morning that we don't have second hour activities in here. Uh, probably people will still stick around. Some will encourage you to spend time with your family uh, today. And uh, again, there may be, if you look around, there may be a cookie or two still, but that we're not having a fellowship time. We're going to sing together a couple songs. I invite you to stand as we sing. The first one being Because He Lives. Glory 
and I know he lives because he lives. I can face tomorrow because he lives. A fear is gone because. him this morning is Christ arose. We're going to sing the first and last verse. I ask you to remain standing for a benediction. I was confused that as Christ the Lord is risen today, I do realize those are two different songs. <laughs> <laughs> we work together. Hope today has been a blessing for you. It's been great to have you here. Happy Easter to all of you. The benediction. May the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Not that one.